We are now confident we know how to build AGI as we have traditionally understood it. And we are beginning to turn our aim beyond that to super intelligence in the true sense of the word. It was a busy Sunday for the CEO of OpenAI, Sam Altman. He posted a cryptic tweet followed by a full blog post talking about a clear path through AGI and now setting their focus on ASI, artificial super intelligence. So let's start with the tweet. I always wanted to write a six word story. Here it is near the singularity, unclear which side very cryptic, what does this possibly mean? This may seem innocuous to most, but for anybody in the AI industry, for the person who leads the most frontier AI lab in the world, who gets to see behind the curtain of artificial intelligence to tweet about the singularity, it is a very big deal. So what is the singularity? The singularity is a hypothetical future point where technological progress accelerates so quickly it becomes uncontrollable and irreversible. And this will fundamentally transform human civilization. According to the definitions, this concept focuses on artificial intelligence surpassing human intelligence to the point where we enter this positive feedback loop of self-improvement. And if you remember back to the situational awareness paper, he calls it the intelligence explosion, the point at which artificial intelligence can do its own research on itself and self-improve. That is when we are going to have ASI. And famed futurist Ray Kurzweil has talked about the singularity at length and predicts we are going to reach the singularity in 2045. Now that's still a ways away, obviously, but he might be too conservative with that prediction based on how everything is going right now. So let me play you a clip from a couple of years ago where Ray Kurzweil is talking to Lex Friedman about the singularity because it really is fascinating. By the time you get to 2045, we'll be able to multiply our intelligence many millions fold. And it's just very hard to imagine what that will be like. And that's the singularity where we can't even imagine. Right, that's why we call it the singularity. It's a singularity in physics. Something gets sucked into its singularity and you can't tell what's going on in there because no information can get out of it. There's various problems with that, but that's the idea. It, it's too... Uh, too much beyond what we can imagine. So as mentioned, the singularity is a point in time in which technology accelerates so quickly, we basically can no longer keep up. It's irreversible. And of course, we've seen many movies about this, including The Matrix, in which artificial intelligence just takes over. But it doesn't necessarily have to end negatively. And based on how large language models work, it is kind of clear that we might be heading in the direction in which we just cannot understand technology anymore very soon. Large language models as they work today are pretty much a black box. We don't truly understand how they work, why certain nodes fire, why certain outputs come when you put in a prompt. We just don't understand this stuff. Of course, plenty of research is being done into figuring out some transparency into these models, but right now we just don't. So a good analogy of what the future might be like is an ant trying to understand human intelligence. It just will never happen. And so that might be us in the future trying to understand artificial intelligence. It just might not happen. And at that that point, alignment obviously is more important than ever. Sam Altman posted a reply to this tweet, giving a little bit more clarity on what he means. It's supposed to either be about one, the simulation hypothesis, which I will talk about in a moment, or two, the impossibility of knowing when the critical moment in the takeoff actually happens. But I like that it works in a lot of other ways too. So let's start with the simulation hypothesis. Now, what is the simulation hypothesis exactly? It is a hypothesis that we are already in a simulation, an artificial simulation, and we just don't know it. This is something that Elon Musk believes, many other tech leaders believe, many other futurists believe, and it seems inevitable to me personally. I do believe this as well. If you look at the rate of acceleration of technology, of our ability to simulate the world, world models, then it seems like our ability to fully simulate the universe is possible. And if it's possible, it likely already happened. Now the question is, is this simulation one of just the way the universe works or is it conducted by a much more advanced civilization? Again, think about the matrix. 
once artificial intelligence reaches that singularity point, then in the worst case, they put us in little pods and we are living in their simulation. Now, back to that video of Ray Kurzweil with Lex Friedman. He talks quite a bit, not only in this interview, but in general, about simulation theory. Let me show you this clip. Do you find compelling the simulation hypothesis as a thought experiment that we're living in a simulation? The universe is computational. So we are an example in a computational world. Therefore, uh, it is a simulation and everything that's going on is, is basically a form of, of computation. So he states that the universe is computational by nature, and so thus it might actually be a simulation. So lots to unpack there. What do you think, by the way? Let me know in the comments. Are we in a simulation? So the second part of Sam Altman's clarification tweet is the impossibility of knowing when the critical moment in the takeoff actually happens. So what does he mean about the takeoff? OpenAI posted this blog post February 24th, 2023, talking about planning for AGI and beyond. This is before they had a clear idea about how to reach AGI. So keep that in mind as we read this. Now, in this post, he talks about the takeoff, slow takeoff versus fast takeoff. And by takeoff, he basically means the thing that we've been talking about. How quickly does technology advance and does it advance so fast that we cannot reverse it? So we think a slower takeoff is easier to make safe and coordination among AGI efforts to slow down at critical junctures will likely be important. Now, I find it interesting that he's talking about slowing things down because that is the opposite of what everything OpenAI has been doing. Successfully transitioning to a world with super intelligence is perhaps the most important and hopeful and scary project in human history. Now, here is him talking more about the takeoff itself. AGI could happen soon or far in the future. Now, we know after the last year and a half, it is closer than he thought at this point. The takeoff speed from initial AGI to more powerful successor systems could be slow or fast. Think of it like a two by two matrix where on one axis you have the takeoff speed and the other axis you have the timeline. Now what Sam Altman believes the safest path is is short timelines and slow takeoff speeds. So making sure that we reach AGI quickly and then the takeoff after that happens in a short period of time, but slowly, which kind of seems contradictory to me because if it's happening on a short timeline, it must have happened quickly, but apparently they think differently. So that was his cryptic tweet. Then just a few hours later on his personal blog, he posted about reflections of the last two years given it's ChatGPT's two year anniversary. And in this blog post, he covers a lot of topics. Let's take a look. Right away, he dives into the new paradigm that was discovered with large language models, which is the ability for these models to think. That is what the O1 and O3 models are able to do. These thinking models, which I've covered in previous videos, use a lot of tokens and compute at inference time to basically think and present the best answer rather than just giving the first answer it comes up with. Now we have transitioned into the next paradigm of models that can do complex reasoning. So I'm gonna continue to read just the most interesting bits from this post. We started OpenAI almost nine years ago because we believed that AGI was possible and that it could be the most impactful technology in human history. We wanted to figure out how to build it and make it broadly beneficial. Then they ended up launching ChatGPT on November 30th, 2022, and it changed the world. We always knew abstractly that at some point we would hit a tipping point and the AI revolution would get kicked off, but we didn't know what the moment would be. To our surprise, it turned out to be this, the launch of the original ChatGPT publicly, which is GPT 3.5. And yes, I will say it again, it changed the world. Suddenly, Everybody saw what was possible with GPT models, with large language models in general. And then the flood of investments, the flood of entrepreneurs starting companies and researchers flocking to the field started completely changing everything. The launch of ChatGPT kicked off a growth curve like nothing we have ever seen in our company, our industry, and the world broadly. We are finally seeing some of the massive upside we have always hoped for from AI, and we can see how much more will come soon. Now here is the important part. We are now confident we know how to build AGI as we have traditionally understood it. So 
I have already mentioned and many believe O3 is clearly AGI. It beats humans on most of these important benchmarks, math benchmarks, science benchmarks, coding benchmarks. This model is incredible. Now, although they are not calling it AGI, this seems like the seed to AGI. And it's clear because he's saying we now have a clear path to AGI, meaning whatever they've done with this O3 model, they are just going to continue to scale that up and that will be AGI. Now listen to this. We believe that in 2025, that is this year, we may see the first agents join the workforce and materially change the output of companies. That is certainly my prediction as well. We are going to see agents join the workforce en masse this year. I really believe it. I believe their value is still going to be pretty specialized this year, but it's going to broaden every subsequent year. But now we are beginning to turn our aim beyond that to super intelligence in the true sense of the word. We love our current products, but we are here for the glorious future. With super intelligence, we can do anything else. Super intelligent tools could massively accelerate scientific discovery and innovation well beyond what we are capable of doing on our own and in turn massively increase abundance and prosperity, something that I'm going to be covering quite a bit this year. What happens post AGI? What happens post ASI? Now he finishes with this sounds like science fiction right now and somewhat crazy to even talk about. That's all right. We've been there before and we're okay with being there again. We're pretty confident that in the next few years, everyone will see what we see and that the need to act with great care while still maximizing broad benefit and empowerment is so important. Wow, what an incredible, incredible statement and prediction. Now, I again want to go back to the situational awareness paper, which is phenomenal. And I made a full video about it, breaking it down. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it down below. So here is the compute. And then here is what he calls the intelligence explosion, the point at which artificial intelligence is so smart it could do its own research and then self-improve iteratively and exponentially. So that is what we're seeing right here. All of a sudden, we have super intelligence. Automated AI research could probably compress a human decade of algorithmic progress into less than a year. And that seems conservative. Imagine you have millions, hundreds of millions of these O3 models and beyond O3 too, running all the time, continuously looking to discover new ways to improve itself and then automatically self-improving. This is not some science fiction future. This is, at least in my mind, seemingly not too far in the future and very possible. The only bottleneck right now seems to be compute. How much compute can we throw at this, especially due to the way that test time compute works, basically the thinking models. It needs a ton of computational power to just churn through all of those tokens while it's figuring out the best answer. And it's not just these models getting better that's gonna trigger this. We need a framework around that intelligence to make it happen. And if you remember back just about six months ago, the Sakana AI team released this paper, AI scientists towards fully automated, open-ended scientific discovery. And in this paper, they detail and show how AI could be used to discover new science, write papers about it, and then apply that new discovery to itself. So it's already been done. Now, obviously this stuff is very immature right now. And so anybody can easily point to this and just say, yeah, they're not really self-improving or look how many mistakes there are in the research papers they're publishing. But the point is, it's there. It has been done. And just like any technology, it will improve and it will get cheaper. And one more thing I want to show you. Chubby, friend of the channel, Forward Future newsletter author, has pointed out something that the head of alignment at OpenAI tweeted about. So this is Joshua from OpenAI, head of alignment. As mentioned, the world isn't grappling enough with the seriousness of AI and how it will append or negate a lot of the assumptions many seemingly robust equilibria are based on. And I'm going to be touching on this in a video coming this week. What does the world look like after AGI? What does the world look like? 
like after ASI. Domestic politics, international politics, market efficiency, the rate of change of technological progress, social graphs, the emotional dependency of people on other people, how we live, how healthy we are, our ability to use technology to change our own bodies and minds. Every single facet of the human experience is going to be impacted. It is extremely strange to me that more people are not aware or interested or even fully believe in the kind of changes that are likely to begin in this decade and continue well through the century. It will not be an easy century. It will be a turbulent one. If we get it right, the joy, fulfillment, and prosperity will be unimaginable. We might fail to get it right if we don't approach the challenge head on. So I'm going to leave you with that to think about. So it's a very exciting time to be alive. 2025 is going to be a pivotal year for AI. We have AI agents entering the workforce. We have discussions about the singularity. We have discussions about simulation hypothesis. These are real things that we have to think through. And I want to know your thoughts. Drop them down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.